The Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. tuned in to Black Talk Radio News. My name, of course, is Scotty Reed. I'm broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of USA, Inc. Today's date is June 17th, 2016. It's Friday afternoon. If you have one one of those lucky ones, or maybe you don't find yourself to be so lucky, but you're on a five-day work week, um, you know, today it's the last day of your work week, and hopefully you'll get to go into the weekend and have a uh, time with your family, time to spend with your family, uh, be even closer to your loved ones and, and what have you. All right, so got a couple of things, a few, quite a few things to talk about. Uh, today marks the one year. I don't even want, we shouldn't even be using a word like anniversary because anniversary is connected to something that is worth celebrating. But it has been one year to date since the white terrorist by the name of Dylan Roof committed his mass shooting of 10 helpless people attending Bible study services at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, which is located in downtown Charleston, South Carolina. So that occurred last year on in the evening during uh, what Bible study, Wednesday nights. That's pretty much in all black churches uh, on Wednesday night. So he went in there and participated in Bible study and then proceeded to commit an atrocious act of terrorism that has never really been called terrorism by authorities, federal authorities or state authorities or by these talking heads in the corporate media Um, but we know and we have called it a a terrorist act but he is not facing any kind of terrorism charges and what have you and so today you know as we look back as to what happened in Orlando another heinous terrorist attack which occurred at the Orlando nightclub. Let's just look at the context of how um, the U.S. government, federal government, officials, and what have you, respond to when there is a suggested element of, quote-unquote, Islamic terrorism or radicalization, as opposed to the language that they use, the things that they propose to when it involves a white person who has committed an act of terrorism. So as we look back on, you know, the um, horrific terrorist attack that occurred last year on this day, uh, it's just, you know, mindful that we put it in the proper context. It's mindful that we pay attention to the system and how it treats such incidents and what have you. All right, so those are some of the uh, things that have caught my eye and also following along uh, the lines of what we were talking about yesterday as we talked about the Orlando shooting attack on the club. Um, 
you know, and, and what I'm saying today. But today I learned, now I heard about the terrorist attack on the member of parliament in the UK, uh, the British parliament, parliament member. I didn't really click on the story or go read it, um, but I've heard, you know, and read excerpts uh, about the story uh, about this man who attacked and killed with the gun. Now, you know, guns are banned in the UK, right? So, but this guy built the gun, apparently. He made a gun. And and again, I just said that the other day with people talking about banning certain quote-unquote assault weapons and stuff. Look, man, people have machine shops and these weapons are not particularly difficult to build. And so, you know, you can ban all the guns you want to try to ban them. You're just never going to be able to do it. If a person is resourceful enough, if he's uh, uh, intent on obtaining something that, you know, it's going to be supplied to him if he can obtain it. So, you know, the, the madness of the gun control. But anyway, this guy has is reportedly got the gun making manual. He bought it from a neo-Nazi white supremacist wannabe, more than likely po-white racist trash, but a neo-Nazi organization based right here in the United States. Again, again, nobody is seizing the funds of these organizations. Many of them have charters. Nobody's talking about taking down the websites that's promoting white supremacist ideology that is leading to the radicalization of terrorists like Dylan Roof. Nobody is. I'm not hearing President Obama talking like that. I'm not hearing John McCain talk like that. I'm not hearing Donald Trump talk like that. I ain't hearing Hillary Clinton talk. Nobody's talking like that. Except for those who are truly interested in justice. Now here, you know, yesterday we were talking about, and I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday, but I made a Facebook post and I was I was just thinking about this horrific attack that occurred in Orlando and I was saying to myself, you know, the, the mainstream just really going out of its way, the establishment is really going out of its way to connect this to Islamic terrorism, even though this guy also admired the terrorist organization known as the NYPD which has committed numerous acts of terrorism against citizens in violation of their human rights. You know, the Constitution, Constitution didn't apply to you. It's, 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 you know, the view that they hold. You black or you Latino or Hispanic, you non-white. So we have to also look at all these killings, of unarmed people, these beatings. These are acts of terrorism like I talked about yesterday under the color of law. State sanction. Acts of terrorism. When police have used terrorism all throughout their 400 year history on this continent. Terrorizing free and enslaved black people, beatings, participating in hangings, and police have historically been members of these racist terrorist groups that preach this white supremacist ideology. A number of investigations this year, last year, media reports about law enforcement members discovered to have ties to neo-Nazi groups or the KKK. But we ain't talking about bombing any areas that they, you know, live in. Where, you know, where, where, where do these people tend to live? What areas they tend to, what regions they tend to cluster and what? Nobody's talking about dropping, you know, cluster bombs on them. You know, cluster bomb is when you drop a bomb that then drops hundreds of little bombs that then disperse over a wider area and then people come across them later, including little children and they say, hey, what's this thing? And they poke it with a stick and then their heads are getting, you know, their bodies are blown to pieces and whatnot. I read an article today about the Bank of America um, and J.P. Morgan um, who are uh, investing in the production of these cluster bombs, which have been in, banned by the, so, man, we just, man, this government is just so corrupt. 
Man, but you know, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but white supremacist terrorism has has been existing on this continent. It's never been brought to an end, and um, I don't suspect that the government, the U.S. government, or any state government has shown has not shown me that they are particularly interested in going after these particular terrorists, domestic terrorists, like they you know talk about going after on the mainstream media when they're talking about. Arabs or Muslims or anything like that. So you know, got we we just got to point out the facts. You know, we can't go along with the mainstream narrative. We have to ask the questions that you know aren't being asked around these public incidents that so many people are talking about. I also have been stating over the past couple of days that you know we should be waiting for more information to come out and. You know, usually give it 36 hours. Sometimes it takes longer than that. Sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes it takes months. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, but I've been talking about where's the 911 call. I don't want to hear no he said, she said. I don't want to care about no reports of this man called into a television station and pledged allegiance to ISIS. Don't, I, I don't want to hear any secondhand reports. I want to hear the audio from the 911 call. The only person that I believe that has made a comment on the call is the uh, is Patience Carter, the young black woman that was trapped in the bathroom with Omar Mateen reportedly for up to three hours who heard him on the 911 call. As I've stated, they will not release the 911 call because based off of what Miss Carter said, I think that's her last name, but based off of what she said, that he cited more than once the bombing of Afghanistan as his reasoning. And I, I stated they are not going to release that. If they do, they are going to edit it out and redact it and what have you. So, I, you know, on a side note, no, I don't believe she is no crisis actor because if she was a crisis actor, the U.S. government would have gave her a better script. They wouldn't have her saying to the media the things that they're trying to hide. So um, Democracy Now! reported, I don't know if it was yesterday or today, I didn't look at the date of the report, but as I suspected, the Orlando Police Department is blocking access to public records pertaining to the Orlando nightclub shooting. And again, that's according to the Democracy Now! report. As I stated yesterday, I want to take a look at the squat team logs. I want to take a look at any kind of communication logs. Definitely want to take a listen to 911 recordings. The 911 recording made by Omar Mateen, and we know he made it, not just because there were a bunch of media reports, but we also uh, had that coming from um, Representative Adam Schiff, who is the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence uh, Committee, one of those uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, House Intelligence Committee. They have all these different committees. I don't know all the names, but he confirmed that Omar Mateen did make from the reports he read, the intelligence reports that they got, is that Omar Mateen made calls from the bathroom, as patient, Patience Carter uh, stated in her interview to the press. Um, last but not least, uh, another topic for discussion. Uh, I've been holding back on a couple of reports, not because I've been holding them back because I'm trying to you know, keep you from knowing something is just, I just have so much work <laughs> and things going on that I just haven't been able to make the news report yet. But anyway, um, Clinton's FBI criminal investigation is continuing to heat up as more damning revelations are coming forward, including uh, unusual defense strategy uh, by all those being targeted in the, the I want to keep stressing, FBI criminal investigation. Uh, the main target, Hillary Clinton, has yet to sit down with the FBI, and she'll probably be last after they talk to everyone else. Um, then um, they'll talk to her, and then if she lies, it, the lies that she's been telling the public through the U.S. corporate media and whatnot, if she sits down with an FBI agent and repeats those same lies, you know, that's another charge right there. That's another charge. So, but anyway, 
Russia and WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks uh, Julian Assange is the editor in chief. Y'all know he's been holed up in an embassy um, in the UK um, as they are trying to arrest him. And, you know, the United States government certainly uh, has an interest in prosecuting him, considering all of these uh, leaked communication, classified communications that uh, they have published, that uh, whistleblowers have sent to them since they know they can't trust. The New York Times, they can't trust, you know, MSNBC to uh, provide this information. No, they going to narc on them and try to assist the U.S. government and help the U.S. government cover up the criminal wrongdoing. So, but anyway, if Russian Wiki, WikiLeaks are reportedly in possession of tens of thousands of Hillary Clinton's emails while she was Secretary of State. Well, how did they get these emails? This is a foreign government. All right, WikiLeaks is WikiLeaks, you know. U.S. government trying to destroy. How did they get the U.S. Secretary of State's email? Well, it might have something to do with she had operated solely on an unapproved, unsecured, private email server. She probably would have had more protection if she had used a Yahoo or Gmail account, but she placed it all in the hands of of, uh, Pagliano, the IT uh, specialist who now has a a limited immunity agreement with the FBI in the criminal investigation. She left it all to him, and it got hacked. I mean, there's even reports, you know, some of the emails come out that he told them that he had to shut the server down because there was hacking attempts. All right. They got in there. That's how Russia, Guccifer, and, and whoever else has these emails got a hold of them. So that's evidence right there of a criminal violation. Once they publish these emails, again, you've already got criminal evidence. I mean, evidence you need to charge this woman on the Espionage Act. Not particularly because she was uh, uh, blatantly leaving these secrets open for anybody to have access to and got paid under the table or through a donation to the Clinton Foundation. Certainly that could have occurred, but in the very least, without involving any, you know, conspiracies and and what have you for financial gain, um, you know, just being negligent, just negligent handling of classified information that a person should know is at risk and should not be outside of a secure government server. That's just being negligent. That's that's grounds for a conviction under the Espionage Act. So that continues to heat up as more and more people like we reported Oprah Winfrey yesterday are endorsing Hillary Clinton in light of all of this evidence of criminal wrongdoing. Again, this is this is why it is so important that we build a expansive alternative media network for black folks. Because the only way that black folks have been voting for Hillary Clinton in such huge numbers is because they have been following the lead of people who are either dumb as hell and and really don't have any interest in politics at all, but it's cool to give an endorsement and be associated with Hillary Clinton. And this can get me future business with the federal government and what have you. Morality never enters into the question for them. Justice never enters into the question again. Most of these people wouldn't even hire a person with a felony record, let alone facing an active FBI criminal probe and and evidence so blatantly out there that this woman is a criminal. Well, not just her, but her entire inner circle are conspiring so that's a, some more reports coming out on that I know you're not hearing a lot about it but this is serious and this is why Bernie Sanders campaign manager yesterday told uh, Morning Joe 
uh, people that know he is still running for president. All this stuff you hearing about Bernie Sanders working with Hillary Clinton and all this and that is just some stuff going on behind the scenes, some some talk going on, but he's not suspending his campaign. He is not dropping out. And of course, Jeff is going Mr. Weaver and others cannot say that you know the things that I'm saying because they're trying to be politically correct and and what have you because they know so much of the Democratic Party is corrupt and in the pockets of Hillary Clinton so they letting it play out obviously super delegates haven't voted yet and neither Sanders or Clinton has the required number of pledged delegates to secure the nomination so again you're just being lied to manipulated by the media and so would you drop out that's the question would you drop out if your main opponent in a in a political election was facing a, a, a criminal investigation with report after report talking about you know uh, criminal indictments are, are imminent I mean there's just no way they cannot indict this woman and have any credibility with the public here in the United States or with the uh, uh, foreign countries abroad. They are going to know, man, the United States is for sale. Well, it's been for sale. We all know that, but it's just so blatant and in your face, man. I think a lot of these young first-time voters, second-time voters, maybe even third-time voters, y'all just came in since, you know, Obama. I'm talking about y'all, you big, huge voting block, man. Only way they voting for Hillary Clinton is because they being misled. Man, can't stress that enough. Can't stress that enough, but, you know. So, um, let me give out the telephone numbers if you um, have any thoughts you would like to share. Again, today is the one year. um, What's a good word? Because we can't say anniversary. You know, you celebrate marital anniversaries, you know, things like that, you know. Good things, you know, no. But we mark one year to date since the terrorist Dylan Roof walked into a church, shot up 10 helpless people, killed nine of them after attending Bible study services with these people. So um, you got any thoughts on any of this stuff, you can give us a call on the conference line at 641-715-3660. The participant code is 549032-POUND. Of course, hit star six one to come in on air. Studio line is open. That is seven zero four nine five one five zero three zero. That's seven zero four nine five one five zero three zero. So, a- as I stated on June seventeenth and twenty fifteen, white boy drove I don't know how many miles but he passed a bunch of black churches along the way but he targeted Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church I believe he targeted it primarily because the pastor was also a, 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 a was also a state senator I'm talking about Mr. Pinckney of course um, he was the pastor of that church as well I believe that is why it was targeted this vicious devil went up in the church sat there for about an hour or so even held hands and got in a prayer circle with his victims as they prayed this devil was just probably playing out who he was going to shoot first in his mind so after prayer goes into his bag and proceeds to gun down 10 helpless people, killing nine of them. Of course, this isn't the first terrorist attack on Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, You would have to go back to prior to the 1865 Civil War. You would have to go back. I don't know the exact date, but um, it was burnt to the ground by white terrorists because of uh, some proxy racist to maybe some scared enslaved African or free black person, but somebody snitched about plans for a 
rebellion against slavery and terrorism in Charleston, South Carolina. The plan was uh, Gullah Jack, as well as Denmark Vesey, who was a formerly enslaved black man who won his freedom, uh, became a, a preacher as well. And it, those two are noted as the uh, masterminds of the ill-fated plot to get freedom. Um, so the plan was to fight their way to the docks, take over a ship, and sail to Haiti because they had also been inspired by the Haitian Revolution where, you know, uh, enslaved Africans overthrew their French enslavers and whatnot on, on that colony. And so that's what they wanted to do, but somebody snitched, somebody got scared, somebody told it, and they just start rounding up people and killing them. Uh, Denmark Vesey was given a show trial, I believe, but they ended up hanging him, and they skint his body, and they took pieces of his body as souvenirs. There's probably some families in South Carolina that got that have those trinkets made from human flesh in their possession to this day passed on to generation to de- generation and like the sick sociopaths they are they probably pull it out on the anniversary of that day and rub it and hold it up and pass it along and let the children play with it like they allowed the children to play with the bones of Reverend uh, Bewley out there in the west So that was the first uh, terrorist attack. They burnt the church down. But, of course, the church would later um, rebuild. And it existed pretty much without incident until Dylan Roof on June 17, 2015, walked into that church and committed a heinous act of terrorism. Now, has this guy been charged with terrorism? No, he ain't been charged with terrorism. Have any other websites that reportedly he visited and was radicalized by, you know, uh, uh, this white supremacist ideology praising the Confederates, Confederacy and and neo Nazis and and you know, were those shut down? Were their funds seized? No, they weren't. They were protected. I know President Obama threatened to have the names published of everybody that was donating to that organization that was publishing that white supremacist propaganda ideology, radicalizing little white boys and girls. No, but it didn't happen. That was just talk, man. Now we've forgotten about it. I haven't, though. I remember he said that. Had they did it? Nope. I think maybe PayPal quit doing business with them when they found out what they were about. I don't know. You know, they should have known what they were about beforehand. I don't know how much investigation they put into that. You know, I didn't go through any kind of process when I signed up for PayPal. So I don't know about about that. You know, any kind of special screening of see if Black Talk Media Project was pushing out, you know, um, ideology that called for mass murder and, and things of that nature and, and the supremacy of black people all over everybody else so, but anyway I don't mean to go off on a tangent but you just look at how they treat these white supremacist organizations these people they, this kind of speech that is radicalizing you know again I talked about yesterday CIA chief on TV talking about these people like Omar Mateen being radicalized through the internet, through websites and stuff like that and you know, but you know, while you will have a few people will say the same thing in accordance with people like Dylan Roof, you know, none of these officials talk the same when they referring to any kind of Islamic jihadists as opposed to when they talking about some kind of Christian jihadists they use totally different language 
And I'm talking about all the officials, not just the white ones, but the black ones too. They don't talk about it in the same way. They don't push for charges under the Patriot Act or they're not using any of that to disrupt their terrorist operations. And now we're we're seeing more and more that it is international terrorism. These white supremacist groups in here in the United States are spreading this internationally and we'll talk about that more on the other side of the break you're listening to black talk radio news my name is scotty reed broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of usa inc we'll be back on the other side Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. Tuned in to Black Talk Radio, new black media for the new millennium. And this is Black Talk Radio News, Scotty Reed in on this broadcast. Uh, RawStory.com reports, and when did this report come out? This report came out yesterday. Um, It says that the suspect in the fatal attack on the UK lawmaker bought U.S. neo-Nazi groups gun building guide. Now, again, you know, I, I've heard of and read of, of stories about people being arrested by the FBI for downloading materials from jihadist websites about bomb making or any kind of weapons making and stuff like that. Uh, here we got a white supremacist group here in the United States selling these gun making, you know, kits online. Now, I'm not saying that it should be against the law. I'm not saying that, you know, for somebody to make a gun, I, I you know, I'm not saying that technical manual should be outlawed or anything, but I'm just trying to point out the double standard, though, the double standard. The 52-year-old man who allegedly shot and killed British Parliament member Joe Cox on Thursday has been a longtime supporter of an American neo-Nazi group, the Southern Poverty Law Center reported. Thomas Mayer spent around $620 in book orders from National Vanguard Books the publishing arm of the National Alliance, including a manual he bought in 1999 that contained instructions on how to build a gun. So, I mean, see, they even, they, man, come on. They even got their own publishing propaganda. Legitimate business, selling books. The government is collecting taxes off these books that they selling. Think about this. Think about this, people. These are white supremacist terrorist groups being allowed to openly, I mean, getting business numbers, I mean, you know, uh, uh, EIN numbers, employer identification numbers, opening up bank accounts, selling books and, and instructions on how to make guns. A screenshot from that guide is posted by the SPLC can be seen below. And it, it's just a little simple pipe pistol, really. Just a little one-shot pistol, looks like. 
Nothing sophisticated, nothing like that. All right. Mayor also bought Ike Kemp, an alleged reproduction of a manual given to new Nazi Party members in Germany during the 1940s and subscribed to several of the group's periodicals, including one called Improvised Munitions Handbooks. According to the SPLC, the explicitly genocidal National Alliance was formed by former physics professor William Pierce, who wrote one book, The Turner Diaries, that inspired Timothy McVeigh's 1995 bombing attack in Oklahoma City. The group has splintered since Pierce's death in 2002. Witnesses said Mayor Yale, Britain first, while shooting Cox with a gun described as being a homemade or antique. Cox has spoken out in opposition to a proposal calling for Britain to leave the European Union. So um, this dude, is he like a Donald Trump supporter. He like America first. All right. Well, really, he, that, let's not just put it all on Donald Trump. That's what both parties are, are preaching. That's what the media is preaching. They are trying to produce a nationalistic approach and unite all America, Americans under this Orlando terrorist attack and see we're all victims of terrorism. The Muslims are the enemy. ISIS is the enemy and blah, 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 blah. Why ignoring white supremacist, neo-Nazi terrorist groups who have operated on this con- continent for hundreds of years. No plans that I see or heard of, of you know, uh, weeding out these terrorists out of law enforcement, out of corrections department, out of, you know, any kind of uh, position of authority. But usually what? They're defended. They're, oh, they have a First Amendment speech right to yell nigger at people in the street. That That's what Timothy Wise said, didn't he? That's what they say, too. That they have a First Amendment speech right. doesn't matter if if... if Historically and academically, that's wrong if you read all of the Supreme Court decisions on in, in terms of fighting words and what have you. But this is what these people, this is, this is, it doesn't matter. This is how it, the system operates. These people get a pass. They get a pass. Because why? Even though you got all these black people working for the federal government, the standard operating procedure is racism, white supremacy, institutional racism. So, of course, these people get in the past. You know, they got members of these groups in law enforcement. So, I mean, what? Come on. Come on. I just want people to realize the country that they pledge allegiance to, that they want to sit up here and co-sign on the attacking of other nations and other peoples and, and all this and that. This, you know, especially if you're black. That's who I'm really talking to is the black folks. All this terrorism and slavery, we continue to suffer. Hundreds of years after the founding of this, this uh, country. And we want to co-sign on to what the U.S. government is saying. What about black first, being black first, you know? So uh, it, it, the hypocrisy is, is just, it's just maddening to me. Not that it's unexpected or anything. All right, but yeah, so this man in ter- this uh, man was killed by a terrorist with ties to racist terrorist base here in the USA. Have they been talking about that for those who have been peeping, you know, the corporate media? Has the CIA or the FBI director come out talking about, you know, we need more funding to infiltrate and disrupt these white supremacist organizations here in the United States? That Are they talking about we need more laws to prevent white supremacist terrorist organizations from opening up bank accounts and and you know even I mean they register with the federal government for God's sake it's legal businesses these are terror organizations but yet you want to slap financial penalties on a country like Cuba cause they kick the races out and they put the people first in terms of priority and spending 
You want to punish them and slap economic sanctions on them? Come on. You want to outlaw the boycott, divestment, sanction movement that's taking aim at ending apartheid in Israel? You want to make that illegal, President Obama? But, I mean, come on, dude. Come on, man. But you're defenseless against white supremacy in America, right? Defenseless. It's not that he's defenseless. It's that he's he's afraid to die. He's afraid to die that if, like, John F. Kennedy took a stand against the establishment, I am by no means trying to uh, confer sainthood on to John F. Kennedy, who was a racist himself, who had his brother at the U.S. Attorney Office spying on the Black Panthers, spying on Malcolm X, spying on every black organization that was out there fighting for liberation. So I'm not trying to do that, but when he said no to the military industrial complex, said no, we are not going to uh, back these racist Cuban rebels so that they can retake Cuba from the People's Army. We're not going to give them cover, military air cover or anything like that, you know, if they want to launch their little attack, they will do it without, you know, any kind of military support from the United States government. That's why he was assassinated and then also for his policies towards the banking industry and the corruption in the banking industry. I'm not trying to say that this man was by far any kind of saint or any or he known adulterer cheating on his wife. He was not a moral man, but he was killed for certain political stances that he took. Saving black lives and destroying white supremacist terrorist organizations is not something President Obama or any other so-called legis- uh, uh, black politician or leader is willing to die for. They just not they not going to do it. Damn that shit. I got seven months left then I can retire get 200,000 a year get paid exorbitant amounts of money to uh, go give speeches damn if Hillary Clinton can get you know 250,000 I know I can get 500,000 as an ex-president come on she wasn't even president that would have seemed like he concerned about making it out alive. So, you know, just don't expect anybody in the U.S. government that I can see to, you know, um, point out or do anything about the institutional racism that exists in the federal government when it comes to addressing white terrorism in the United States. It's, It's I just don't see that happening. Um, yesterday, again, uh, going back to something I stated at the beginning, uh, the, the, according to Democracy Now!, they're not going to release these 911 calls. Just not going to do it. Uh, government agencies, according to Democracy Now!, are refusing to release public records about Sunday's massacre in Orlando, Florida. Multimedia resources have reported shooter Omar Mateen called 911 during the time of the assault and declared his allegiance to ISIS. But the city of Orlando is refusing to release any 911 calls. Other agencies are refusing to release documents about Mateen's security guard license and records from a teen stint as a correction officer. Barbara Peterson of the First Amendment Foundation said they are trying to control the system of information. They are trying to control what people know. So for the past three days, I have been calling for the release. I knew some organization, news organization, that has more resources than the Black Talk Media Project was going to put in a Freedom of Information at request. For these calls, these are public records, people. What are they hiding? That's what you must. Ask. That's what you must ask yourself. What are they hiding? What is it that they don't want you to know? I already told you. The other day, what they don't want you to hear, his reason for launching attack, his stated reason. They want to give you 
their reason so that they can justify their continual fake war on terror where sometimes they might be fighting terrorism and other times they might be aiding terrorists to overthrow stable governments like they're trying to do to Syria like they did to Libya like they did to Iraq they use terrorists to do these things man just a matter of the historical record so that's what they want you to believe what they say he did it all for ISIS no this dude only mentioned ISIS because he was seeking headlines he didn't give a damn about I don't believe he really showed any kind of concern for his people in Afghanistan being bombed as he stated on the call cause unless I can see you know that he said something about this in the past that he's expressed some kind of concern about the civilian casualties of the U.S. war in, in NATO war in Afghanistan. It's been going on for how many years? Damn, 15 years now? The real reason they're still there is to guard them poppy fields so that the CIA can have, you know, funding off the books from the drug trade and if, if some whites we got to do some white sacrifice and let some white folks die from overdosing on heroin then so be it we don't care you know that's just collateral damage and what have you that's the only reason they still in Afghanistan to guard the poppy fields to protect the global drug trade which is being run by governments and corporations but, of course, they're trying to control the stream of information. They, they don't want you to have all the information because once you have the information, you might be able to put the pieces together and come to a logical conclusion instead of being led to a conclusion that was not formulated by you. Let's go ahead and listen to Patience Carter again. Let me see if I can pull up that, that video because... If I'm going to believe any he said, she said, I'm going to believe what she said. And she was in the bathroom, locked up with him. All right. She was in the bathroom, locked up with him. And she heard him on the 911 call, which uh, Representative Adam Schiff confirmed he did make the call from the bathroom. So I have no reason to not believe what she said. But where are but again, we still want to hear it for ourselves. Still. I'm trying I'm trying to find it on our Facebook page. Y'all bear with me. Um here we go. Omar Mateen's nine one one call. Let's pull that up. Scotty Reed here with your Black Talk Radio Weekly Commentary. According to a witness Okay, that's the wrong one. That's a news report. I want the uncut version of her speaking on it. Here it go. The bathroom and was shooting his machine gun. So we're all like scrambling around in the bathroom, screaming at the top of our lungs when he was in there for the first time. And then, you know, people were getting hit by bullets, like blood is everywhere. And then there was a moment where he stopped um, shooting in the bathroom. And that's when everyone looked around. And that's when I first realized that my leg was shot. There were several other people shot and bleeding in the bathroom. That's when Akira, who didn't make it, realized she was shot in her arm. And I'm not sure if that was when Tierra also got shot on her side. There were wall fragments hitting my legs, but that was really just the machine gun that he had um, blared around the entire room. And it actually got jammed. He was like, damn, like jammed. So with my face under the stove looking, I could see him put down his machine gun and try to, and you could hear him trying to click and fix his handgun. We lay there for hours and hours hoping that someone came and got us and hoping that the police would come through at that point in time and just like save us all. But throughout that period of hours, the gunman was in there with us and he actually made a call to 911 from there. We could, all, everybody could hear who's in the bathroom who survived, could hear him talking to 911 saying that the reason why he's doing this is because he wants America to stop bombing his country. And from that conversation, from 9-1-1, he pledges allegiance to ISIS. And he started speaking, and I believe after he got off the, the, the phone with 9 one he started speaking in Arabic. And now that I know to be Arabic, at first I didn't know like, what, what the language was. Um, and, and after that, 
he even spoke to us directly in the bathroom. He said, are there any black people in here? I was too afraid to answer, but there was an African-American male in the stall where most of my body was, majority of my body was, had answered. And he said, yes, there are about six or seven of us. And the woman responded back to him saying that, you know, I don't have a problem with black people. Um, this is about my country. You guys suffered enough. The last shots that went off that he did inside the bathroom while we were held hostage was right before the police um, bust through our bathroom that we were inside of. So there were like three explosive sounds that went off right before um, the police actually rescued us. The last thing that I heard before the police said, you know, move away from the walls, because obviously they were about to bust through again. He said, hey you, to someone on the floor inside the bathroom and shot them, shot another person, and then shot another person who happened to be directly behind me, who I'm told through the eyes of Tierra that she would me with their own body to make sure that I wasn't hit. But after he left us, ran off those last three shots, hey you, bow, bow, bow. They bust through the wall and they started engaging in gunfire after they told him, put your weapon down, put your weapon down, he didn't. So they engaged in gunfire, they got him, they shot him dead. And from that point, because the wall had exploded the pipes, there was water starting to rise. I was getting really scared because I was thinking like, if I don't get, the, like they'll get to me soon or something, I might drown sitting here in this water. All right, so that was Patience Carter, and no, I again, I, I had to keep stressing this because a number of people kept, I kept seeing these memes popped up. She ain't no crisis I actor just because she's a reported intern uh, for Fox News does not mean that she, this is all fake, this is all made up, and and what have you. I don't know of any crisis actors, and they do exist, by the way, but. I just haven't heard of any being met by President Obama and given that much media attention and what have you. Um, I, I absolutely believe this woman and everything that she says. If I was, let's say, working for the federal government and I'm trying to, you know, uh, uh, control the media narrative, I'm going to give her a different script than to be talking about the suffering of black people who have suffered enough terrorism but still keep suffering terrorism in this this country i'm not going to talk about the bombing of the continued bombing of afghanistan i'm i'm, I'm just going to strictly only talk about you know <clears throat> probably just speaking arabic or whatever or i don't know I, I would just give them something to support the government narrative which is let's bomb isis let's bomb isis 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 isil 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 in in terrorist 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 arabs muslim islam that, you know that's what i expect to hear from a crisis actor in this situation that's not what i'm hearing and again there is confirmation we know these records exist why won't they release them why won't they release them cause they want to keep the truth from you just sad you know they're gonna hijack this to attack people's second amendment rights i mean it's a fact it's an undeniable fact that no one with the gun to protect themselves in that club was shot and killed that we know of i don't know of anybody who had a gun there are no reports about guns being found on the victim's bodies or, or anything like that but you know i don't think that anybody who was armed and trained minimally in self-defense was among the victims. But that's what Hillary Clinton wants to attach it to. Even Bernie Sanders, I read, is now talking about I support a ban on assault weapons and whatnot. So that's that's where they want you to, your mind to go with it. They don't want you to go with evaluating 16 years of U.S. foreign policy. Last thing I want to share with you, uh, yesterday, I believe, Bernie Sanders campaign manager Jeff Weaver was asked to ask point blank, is uh, his candidate still a candidate for president? And he said yes. So all the mixed signals that you're getting from the Sanders campaign is it, for a reason. There are chess moves being made behind the scenes and what have you. This is unprecedented territory, people. Never in the history 
of U.S. politics, at least in modern U.S. politics, has a person facing an FBI investigation ever run for president. Think about that history that's being made here. So if you was in this race and all this information keeps coming out about this woman violating procedures meant to keep the State Department in compliance with federal law and she just blatantly disregarded it. Evidence is out there that shows she violated the Espionage Act with her carelessness, if in fact she was being careless, which I don't believe she was. Was she blinded by arrogance to think that she could operate as U.S. Secretary of State totally on a private email server? Possible. But she ignored all advice from even close aides to get on the government service. So if I was facing her, you know, she doesn't have enough delegates to say outright that I've claimed a nomination and we still got a ways to go by what, 30 something days or more to the nomination with this ongoing criminal pro with more and more information coming out. I wouldn't drop out either. Behind the scenes, I'll be saying to these super delicates, you really, really want to put your name and your credibility behind this woman. After all that she's done, do you really, is that the type of judgment you want on display for the voters in your district? Well, it really don't matter because the masses of voters, not talking about everybody, but the masses of voters vote exactly how the media tells them to do. If we're talking about black people, we're talking about people like Steve Harvey, we're talking about Tom Joyner. We're talking about the Oprah Winfrey's. We're talking about the Nicki Minaj's. We're talking about President Obama. I, I noticed, you know, I, I don't know if first ladies usually endorse a president for candidate, but Michelle Obama ain't endorsing Hillary Clinton. Obama has a reason to endorse her. He has a reason to see her skate on these email issues because as she states in this clip, I'm going to play, as she states, hundreds of people knew. Hundreds of people knew I was on this private email server and and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, unless she never emailed President Obama, he knew. And he knew she was operating outside the law. So he has vested interest in seeing her get away with this. So, you know, that's why he's endorsing her and making prejudicial statements. He's a lawyer. He knows better. He knows he's not supposed to be uh, making statements to the public that could influence this investigation or prejudice any potential grand jury or, or juries. If there's a criminal trial, he knows that he's a lawyer. He understands this, but he has a personal stake in it. So let, let me um, pull up this clip. This is one of the latest updates on Hillary Clinton's uh, email investigation. It's not going away, people. It's, it's, it's not going away. I really don't see how they cannot indict her. Well, yes, I do. Because, again, they got such control of the minds of the masses that, like Donald Trump said, man, you know, he could go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody dead in the street and people would still support him. Same thing with Hillary Clinton supporters. She has actually killed people and bragged about it. When I say kill people, she made decisions. She pushed for assassinations and whatnot and then laughed about it after she found out. After she got word that Muammar Gaddafi's dead, the jihadists took him out. Here's the video. Allah Akbar. Pow, 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 pow. Allah Akbar. Here's Hillary Clinton laughing. Man. Anyway, here, this, oh, man, this woman, man. They can't put her in jail for that. They need to put her in jail for something. Let me um, cue this clip up. Um. Terry's word is good if she makes a commitment. Uh, All right, let me move forward in this clip so I can get to the part about her Great email. New complications. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is live in Washington on that. So, Catherine, what is this all about? 
Well, thank you, Eric, and good morning. Four of the central players in the FBI investigation are represented by the same lawyer and what legal experts, including a former U.S. attorney, say is highly unusual and may present a conflict of interest. The so-called common defense allows defendants to share the same lawyer and critics say share information and possibly coordinate their stories. In this case, Clinton's former chief of staff, Cheryl Mills, policy advisor, Jake Sullivan, Clinton gatekeeper for the media, Philippe Rhinus, as well as Heather Samuelson, who decided which emails to destroy and which emails to share with the State Department. They all share the same attorney. Each of those um, potential targets or subjects of the investigation get to share information across that same attorney and, quite frankly, get their story uh, to sync up and understand what other people know uh, of the situation. Whitaker's group has also filed a freedom of information lawsuit to get the emails of Dennis Chang, who was Mrs. Clinton's deputy chief of protocol. Only a handful of his emails were released by the State Department, and he was considered a point person between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation. On the Sunday talk shows, Mrs. Clinton dismissed the independent findings of the State Department's inspector general that her email practices broke the rules and violated the law to keep government records. I uh, thought that the uh, report actually uh, made it clear that uh, the practice I used uh, was used by other secretaries. Everybody in the department knew that I was emailing from a personal address. Hundreds of people knew it. People around the government knew it. Also, as early as today, Clinton IT specialist Brian Pagliano may file a copy with the court of his immunity deal with the Justice Department as part of the Freedom of Information Action lawsuit by Judicial Watch. As you recall, Eric, he took the fifth on Capitol Hill, and he now intends to take the fifth in this civil case. Eric. Well, that investigation seems to be really ramping up. Catherine, mm -hmm. thank you. Again, man, if they had found nothing after over a year of investigation, this thing would have been shut down. But the, the conspiracy is so vast. And the, uh, the violations are so obvious, you know, that you just, you, you really had to cross, dot your I's and cross the T's. We're talking about two of them. We're talking about possibly two of the most powerful white supremacists on the planet, Hillary and Bill Clinton. This is about more than just the email. It's also about donations from foreign governments to the Clinton Foundation that then saw weapon deals approved at the State Department while Hillary Clinton was there. It's just so much there. So much. Now, would you drop out? Would you drop out? Now, Hillary Clinton go in there and lie to FBI investigators when they finally sent her, sit her butt down. That, those are charges right there. That stuff she just saying, other people did it. Nobody had a private server in their basement. And I'm sure she might be telling the truth about hundreds of people um, knew. But according to the IG report, the people who were supposed to know didn't know and did not approve her email setup, and that's just a lie. Now, Pal and Condoleezza Rice did receive and send a few State Department emails via their Yahoo and uh, Gmail account, but neither one of them went to the extraordinary length to hire, hire an IT person to install a server in their home and use it exclusively for State Department business. How can you be on a, a grand jury and not indict this woman? So, that's why Bernie Sanders not dropping out. Because this woman is just so blatant. The violations are so blatant. They may have difficulty allowing her to get away with it even if they wanted to. Because it's just too much coming out from too many sources. And as I stated at the beginning of today's program, Russia is in possession of her emails. How did they get possession of her emails? From what I read, because they were monitoring this hacker by the name of Guccifer who said he hacked into her email. And so they were able to, I guess, confiscate his emails that he downloaded, well, her emails off of his, off the server, he was keeping everything going. 
It's also being reported they may have turned them over to WikiLeaks, as Julian Assange has said they are about to release tens of thousands of damning emails that provide uh, certainly enough information for an indictment, but he believes that she likely won't be indicted, and he cites the fact that she moved her campaign headquarters to uh, reside in the very building that Loretta Lynch works in. All of this stuff is just so much drama, man. Wow. So I, I don't see how they can let her get away. If they do get away with it, I bet not ever hear one of you talk about black folks need to obey this law and obey that law if they don't want to get locked up. They shouldn't have been sagging or they shouldn't have been smoking or they shouldn't have been drinking. or I don't want to hear that respectability Negro crap coming out of nobody's mouth. When you sitting up here want to endorse such a unscrupulous, unethical, blatantly lying person like Hillary Clinton. Don't come at me with this stuff about good stock and bad stock and you endorsing this criminal? Come on. All right, that's all I got for you uh, today. I will be back on air. I will be back on air Monday, of course, yeah. Monday, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Let me say this, though, before I wrap up. I had a number of people... Uh, reach out to me for interviews. I had some people associated with the tent, the uh, Tea Party, some black dude named Ni- Niger something. I hope that's how you pronounce his name, and it's not nigger, um, but his name is N-I-G-E-R, a black dude that's down with the Tea Party, and they was wanting to come on and, and had provided me a report about the Clinton Foundation taking money from this little nation I had never heard about where the the dictator that runs this nation openly targets and kills gays, you know, and, and the Clinton Foundation has taken money from them, from this dictator and whatnot. So I was like, sure, you can come on and, and talk crap about Hillary Clinton. I'm down with that, you know. Uh, yeah, because I think she's garbage too. I think she's a sick, evil so- sociopath too, but... You know, I bet you they see they be reaching out and they be asking to come on this program before they actually listen to the program. And when they hear me come on air with that broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of USA Inc., they don't want to be associated with that. That's the only logical conclusion I can come back to why I never hear from these people again. And not just the Tea Party type people, but the people who want to play the respectable Negro role in America and whatnot. I totally understand. So I'm just saying, make sure you listen to Black Talk Radio News before you ask to be a guest on Black Talk Radio News. With that said, it's a battlefield out there, people being enslaved, people being killed, they being stomped unconscious on the pavement by slave-catching terrorist cops. You got white supremacy, uh, uh, neo-Nazi terrorist organizations being protected by the United States government and state governments who are linked to terrorist attacks abroad and nobody seems to be alarmed by this nobody is talking about going after them the way they proclaim themselves to go after Islamic terrorists and what have you so that means what? that means that your safety and your security is in your hands and nobody else's So you better develop battlefield skills. You better acquire the necessary self-defense weaponry because who knows when the next terrorist attack is going to occur and by who. Be safe out there over this weekend. No drinking and driving. No drugging and driving. If you're going to go out to the club, you know, stop after one drink, you know, if you can drink sociably, don't get drunk, then, you know, you also need to identify where all the exits are. You need to be watching who's coming in and coming. Just your head should be on a swivel. There's no place safe for you to feel like you are safe. Always be on alert. Peace and blessings to all.